Hei kaikille, mä oon Puolakan Katja ja toimin Appletser-instituutin maajohtajana. Ja mulla on uh, tässä haastateltavana Eerin Raili Australiasta. Tänään Eerinin kanssa jutellaan hieman meidän jatkokursseista siinä meidän perus, uh, peruskurssien kokonaisuudessa sekä sitten yhdestä erikoiskurssista. Aiheena meillä on siis Samat Emotional Release. Ja tullaan puhumaan ser ykkösestä, ser kakkosesta ja ser tipistä, että mitä ne on opiskelijoille ja mitä, mitä niitä kursseilta saa. Ja tämä haastattelu tulee olemaan englanniksi. Hi Erin, so um, thank you for, uh, for joining this interview and uh, if we could start with the introduction for those who don't know you yet. Sure, um, hi Katja, nice to be here tonight. Uh, so my name's Erin, I'm a craniosacral therapist and teacher for the Upledger Institute based here in Australia. Uh, I've been teaching for the Institute since about 2012 and I teach cranial one through to SER2 and somatic motion release mastering the inner physician clinical applications classes. So I'm busy teaching and also have a busy private practice here in Adelaide. Thank you. Um, Could you tell a little bit about the SCR1 class, which is the third in the basic training and, and the structure of it? Sure. Yeah. So I think the first thing I would say about some matter motion release level one is don't be put off by the name. It doesn't mean something completely different. It is a natural evolution of craniosacral therapy. And so in somatic motion release one, we continue the mouth work that you started in level two. And so on the first day, you will come in and review all of the mouth work from level two. And then we add some new pieces as we work into the floor of the mouth. And we also work more deeply into the hyoid work. And we do this on a structural level, but also to open up this entire avenue of expression. And that doesn't just mean verbal expression, also means creative expression, expression of who we are in the world and our sense of self. So it's really wonderful and deep work into that mouth work. Then we move a little bit further into the energy assist work that we started in level two as well. We work a little deeper with that. We expand our awareness working uh, a little more broadly with tissue memory. So you can think of energy assist as containing kind of a snapshot of everything that was happening in the person's life at the time that the energy assist formed. And that's a very multi-sensory experience. So it could be that the energy assist retains the imprint in the tissues, in the muscles and bones and fascia. It retains an imprint of the nervous system at the time. Sometimes it might retain an imprint perhaps of a memory, the memory of what happened, the sounds that were around, the smells as well and very um, often the emotions too. So in Somat Emotional Release 1, we start to work with that more broadly. We work in groups of three, so you get to start to do a little bit of multi-hands and we in the Upledger world love any opportunity to have multiple therapists working on us. And then uh, as we take that a little further, we start to have an introduction to working with what we call therapeutic imagery and dialogue. So this is where we start to use some conversational techniques to support the shift of the emotion from the tissues as well. So it's a really wonderful class, uh, taking what you already know, taking it deeper into the body. And we finish the class with some balancing integration pieces where we work with some meridians. Uh, so for those of you that have a Chinese medicine background, you might really enjoy that. We work with a concept called vectors as well, and a little bit of balancing of some of the other energetic structures. Thank you. And um, what did the students gain from that 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 course? Um, yeah. Look, I think many things. Um, I'm sure that many of you already with your patients have had experiences where you have been working and perhaps the patient has expressed a little bit of emotion, maybe a single tear, or maybe they have simply said to you, oh, it's so weird. I just thought about that car accident I had 10 years ago. All of those, the little 
nudges that are showing you that your person is starting to move into the tissue memory. And so one of the biggest skills that you'll gain from SCR1 is how to work with that in more detail. I think the other thing that you really gain from SCR1 is really deepening your sense of palpation and moving, really moving away from protocol-based work into this really like, what's the primary issue here for the person? Is it structural? Is it emotional? Um, can we work with all of those pieces? And it's not that we're saying that all of a sudden you're only going to do emotionally based work. It's just that you'll start to gain some tools to really be able to support your patients with that. Thank you. And then uh, if, you, if we move into the SCR2, uh, can you tell a little bit about the structure of that class? And before that, congratulations of, of being an instructor for that class as well now. Thank you. So SCR2 is a continuation of the imagery and dialogue work that we start in SCR1. So in SCR1, we spend the third day of the class introducing some very basic concepts around how to work with this. In SCR2, we really dive into that in a much bigger way. So in SCR2, we look at imagery and dialogue or imagery and conversation from several different perspectives. So we look at it from the perspective of Gestalt work. And with that, we look very much about how do we work with the image? How do we work with a person as a whole rather than just different parts? In SCR2, we also draw on Jungian work. And so we really look at concepts like archetypes and symbols and myths and how those things can show up in people's imagery. So it gives you an idea when those types of images start to emerge for your patients, perhaps how to work with that. We talk a little bit about the individuation process, which from a Jungian perspective is finding our true sense of self and how that can be expressed in the world. And so in SCR2, we really look at how those images might come up in sessions as well. We work with psychosynthesis also. So Asagioli and his work talked a lot about subpersonalities, so the parts of us, you know, the wounded child or the mother, you know, how these images show up for our patients and how we might work with that from a conversation perspective as well. And then we also work with something called completion of a biological process. So this is a concept from Dr. Rapp Ledger where he sort of talked about this idea that biological processes in the body um, they're, they're a gene expression, that expression of the gene can be switched on and it's not switched off until we have some kind of normal completion of that process. Now, birth is the obvious one with that because there's a lot of different things that can interrupt that process, whether it be uh, miscarriage, termination, um, some kind of change to the delivery process that might be not optimal. And when these processes continue sort of unresolved in the body, they can really cause a lot of problems. Now, it's not just birth, you know, often we'll do that kind of process with surgeries as well. Um, I know I had a really wonderful process myself after a wrist surgery that I'd had, and I had this ongoing kind of problem, my wrist wasn't healing properly, and I was able to go back and, and through this imagery process, actually kind of rewrite the way that it happened and, and go through an imaginary process around that. And I think, you know, we can say, oh, well, it's the imagination. But, you know, Candace Pert, um, you know, an American scientist, she would have a look at the sort of neuroendocrine uh, cascade of physiological events that happen in the body. And she, in her research, showed that it doesn't matter if it's the event that's happening or we're imagining it. Actually, that same cascade happens in the body. So we're working with the imagination to affect the physiology and to make change in the body. So wonderful class. And you'll gain a lot in terms of your understanding around imagery and how to have different sort of conversational styles with the work. And also that completion of a biological process, um, which is a really, really nice piece as well. Yeah, sounds really interesting. Um, 
then it's probably a little while ago that you had your own SDR too, but how was that, that class for you as a student? Uh, SER2 was transformative for me. I, I think of all of the classes I've taken, I, it was a really pivotal moment in my work. Um, I'd had quite a long break between SER1 and SER2. And, and when I came to it, uh, my own process that I went through was deeply transformative. But also just learning those skills to be able to help patients in that way really solidified for me that craniosacral therapy is what I wanted to do with my life. So wonderful. Yeah, if I think back, it was a really a wonderful time. Yeah. And then uh, it's not our in the, in the basic training, but um, the Surtip class, um, can you... Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Because you are the, with Stan, you are the, the other instructor in the whole world who teaches that class. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I love somatomotional relief and mastering the inner physician. I think, you know, the core curriculum classes, while you certainly will do your own work, they're very much focused on learning skills to work with your clients as well. And I think the really beautiful thing that Stan has done with the SIRTIP class is it's all about you as a therapist to come and do your own work. And so we draw in that, again, on Gestalt work, Jungian work, psychosynthesis. We certainly go a little deeper into psychosynthesis in the SIRTIP class and look at some uh, key sort of aspects of that work, which is uh, the work around the will and how we activate the will in our lives to be able to create the life that we want and to uh, find a sense of ourselves in that way. Certainly we work deeper with Jung's work as well and his concepts and really uh, embodying that individuation process. And you know, for those of you that don't perhaps know that word, I mean, the individuation process is the unfolding of our true selves and the inner work and the inner life that we can come into contact with as we become our own person. And often we have to do a lot of work to, you know, we have all of these parts of us that have perhaps been wounded before or, you know, have pulled us away from our connection with that centre. And the Jungian work is all about reclaiming that and then how we live that out through our lives. And so one of the really beautiful things about the SIRTIP class is that we do drawings as well. And we, with all of the imagery work that we do in craniosacral therapy, it's um, a really wonderful thing to bring that image up. But in order to be able to really work with it ongoing, we need to put that image in front of us. And we can do that through writing. We can do that through movement and dance. Um, and we can also do that through drawing. And so I've been... Um, this has been my life's work, I guess, I, almost 20 years now of working in my own personal process in psychosynthesis and Jungian work and, and, and drawing and really working through those parts of me that need expression in some way through that. And so this class is a beautiful four days of deeply exploring all of that work uh, for yourself. And as Stan would say, you know, the best thing that you can bring to the table is a more integrated therapist. You know, the best thing we can do for our clients is be willing to go down the proverbial rabbit hole ourselves. We really can't take them somewhere or go somewhere with them in that facilitator role if we're not willing to do that as well. And um, why do you want to teach that, that class? Why do I enjoy teaching it? Um, it's such a profound privilege to be with somebody as they really go deeply into themselves. I, I don't think there's anything more profound than that. And to, so to be able to hold a space and, and to witness a group of people really show the courage that it takes to face themselves 
I mean, it's it's such a beautiful thing. And for me as a teacher, I look at it like, you know, when I walk into a classroom like that in, in Smart Emotion Release or in the Sir Tip class, there's all of these beautiful aspects of me that are reflected in those students as well. And so not only am I holding space for your transformation uh, as a student, I also go through my own with the class as well. You know, we can't help but be transformed when we are in connection and relationship with each other. So, you know, powerful and profoundly beautiful experience. Thank you, Erin. You're welcome. And uh, for those um, who want to join us, we will have the class with Stan. We will have SCR2 and SERTIP in, in August, and then Erin will be teaching SCR1 in, in September. And both the, the first two levels, CS1 in, in September and in December, and then CS2 in December 2022 and we will be planning for the next year to 2023 soon so yeah. thank you awesome thanks so much Katya